Will Crosby. Uh, Jake Terrio. So have you played, it's this little game, you may have heard of it, Destiny 2. Is that the game that was on Jeopardy last night? <laughs> yes. Yes, I have to put in that clip now of Alex Trebek being very sad that none of the eggheads know anything about video games. What is Halo? No. What is Destiny? Jordan, back to you. 800. But anyways. There, yeah, enough connections there. <laughs> yes, so we are not idiots on Jeopardy, and we have both played Destiny 2. Well, this is year two now. So we talked back in year one, which is a video that doesn't exist on the internet anymore, but we won't talk about that. This is true. But now, it's that year two content. Here comes Destiny 2 Forsaken. And guess what, Will? They killed Nathan Fillion. Finally. So I want to talk a little bit about this campaign. I thought it was great. It was so different from everything Destiny has done before, yes. which is a yes. good thing. Instead of just giving you a mission where you do all the stuff they gave you adventures. Well, actually, I sh we should start at the beginning. Uh, Aldrin Zov. <laughs> Not dead. Man, I want to get into so much lore stuff right now. <laughs> Back uh, at the Battle of Saturn. <laughs> well, I just it was confusing because they said the Awoken had hidden themselves for so long. And then I was yeah. like, but Zavala was around. But Zavala yeah. died in a spaceship on the reef and then his ghost found him anyways so but as i was saying it, there's these great campaign missions that you do and then in the middle of it they're like okay you got to go kill all these barons in my mind i was like oh it's gonna be a stupid thing where like we probably fight them all at once or something stupid happens but no you get these individual adventures that you get to go off mm. on uh, i think yeah. they did a great job with that a great ending and then all of a sudden there's more content after there's you beat like the campaign. a whole nother game after the main campaign ends and it was like another campaign it was crazy yeah they did a great job changing the game up enough from what was a very rocky launch for destiny 2 yeah in terms of the campaign because i have one more kind of campaign thought before we go into the end game content and how the game has changed even since what you said you know the rocky launch the whole tracking down Aldrin and the barons that whole campaign is kind of just a macguffin for the end game content. Like none of that really mattered at all until you get to the Dreaming City. And like the whole thing about Cade even dying, that doesn't play into anything that happens in the end game at all. He was just collateral damage. Right, yeah, he was collateral damage. And in the end, it wasn't really even Aldrin Zov who killed him. Yeah. Like yeah. It, was, he was, it was just, he was in the wrong place at the wrong time. Exactly. A lot has changed. There's a whole new PvE slash PvP mode called Gambit. What are your thoughts? I'm very much a PvE guy. I like story. I will grind out all that sort of stuff. Usually when I play Crucible, I'm not half bad. Gambit's very different because I love the PvE aspect of it. And yeah. even the lore behind what is happening oh, yeah, with Gambit. Yeah, I want to talk about that. Even that, yeah. like on a whole nother <laughs> level, is incredible. So Callum, you read about in this lore tab, ran a um, smuggling ring. And for years and years, they couldn't find his hideout. And there's one lore tab. The person who wrote it, Renegade, which I think is alleged to be the Drifter, finds him in the Ascendant plane. That's where he was hiding all his stuff. And then he right. shoots him and says, I painted him on the wall. And then in that new strike that came out, you can actually go find him painted on the wall where he died. The Dreaming City strike? Yeah, the corrupted one. This is then a good segue into there is a ton of content that has come about since the first clear of the raid, which I think was a really cool design idea that they yes. they knew there was a set date where the raid was going to come out and they knew it would, you know, <laughs> even though it was 18 and a half hours before that first team cleared the raid, which I think was more than the Vault of Glass, which was four, 14 or something, right? Yeah. But I thought that was a really cool design that they had these preordained story events and content that went with these story events that would trigger canonically when the, when the Guardians killed the last of the Ahamkara. Oh, uh, supposedly. Which, who was the person at Bungie that snuck, you know, this elvish capital city into our game about shooting aliens in the future? <laughs> That's what I thought about. It's so good. Uh, I've not yet done the raid. I've gone in a couple times to get the chest that you can get for free. Yeah, same. But that's the only thing. Well, first of all, I guess let's talk about the Dreaming City. It's this big, awoken city 
out in the, you know, I don't even know where technically it's supposed to be. It's out like, at the end of the reef somewhere. Yeah, it's like deep in the reef. It was like their secret city. So all of this to say, I think Bungie has outdone themselves with this whole environment of the Dreaming City. And as far as endgame content goes, easily the best that they've done so far. Hands down. Like, hand, yeah, hands down. And so I'm really interested to see what these three, the annual pass activities that they have announced and semi-announced. Oh, wow, I totally forgot about those. <laughs> well, because I specifically remember the December one is going to be the Black Armory because heavy machine guns are coming back. Oh, thank goodness. That's easily the most exciting announcement that Bungie has told us of anything so far. But then it's Joker's Wild, which is something to do with the Drifter. And then it's Penumbra, which from the art has heavily indicated that we're going back to the Leviathan. And so I guess it's going to be like one really long whisper of the worm where they just kind of put something into the game and don't tell you how to get it. And you just have to figure it out. Oh, that's very exciting. Yeah. And then we get year three which who knows what the heck that's going to be. It's so crazy. I'm I I am so happy with this content. Like I was yeah. I was done with Destiny. Like Souls of Heroes brought me back. I got my t-shirt the other day. It was very exciting and then I was like this Forsaken looks real good and then it has just delivered um tenfold in spades to use the pun. Yes, delivered in spades. Uh incredible. I'm I'm very excited with yes. what's happening and there's just like there's just more game everywhere i turn i'm like i think i've done all the content and then no there's just more game hiding under the surface because apparently what i haven't done this will be the last kind of new thing we talk about before we wrap it up with um just favorite new things and maybe minor quibbles that we have because i do have a couple of quibbles quibbles and quibbles there's what was described in the This Week at Bungie notes as a three-person mini-raid, the Shattered Throne dungeon, but apparently the bosses go all the way up to 590, so <laughs> I've not even attempted to touch that yet. But yeah, so there's like there's just always new content around the corner. Oh, so, yeah. as a wrap-it-up, favorite new things. Pick three things, favorite things, go. Okay, three favorite new things. Triumphs yes. tab... Is number one. Um, it gives me a place to finally like have a checklist. Having a place to read lore, be like, oh, what do I need to do? Oh, I have to do 200 grenade kills with a specific grenade? Okay, I'll do that today. Um, number two, I would say the wanted bounties. That whole, uh, actually Just the whole general. new bounty system. Uh, the going to a planet, grabbing stuff, and including the wanted bounties for lost sectors and stuff, I, I really appreciate that system. Really gives you a in between between, like, picking finding a quest, and just getting your reward. Uh, I like that. And number three is all the new secret stuff. There is a lot of secret stuff. It's so cool. Like I feel like at least half of the exotics are hidden behind secret stuff. Yes. Like it's exotics that they announced, but then they didn't tell you how to get them, and they're all like quest based around specific enemies. I have yet to get a single new exotic. Those are not my favorite things. My favorite things, this goes back to the whole concept of who snuck this elvish city into my sci fi shooter. <laughs> but bows are the most incredible thing I think Bungie has ever put into the game. Oh, 100%. I had no idea how fun those were going to be. Now I have the bow, and I'm always, if there's a slot for a bow, there's going to be a bow there. Bows are incredible. I think there is one of the new strikes in particular that I think stepped up even Bungie's strike capabilities, and that's the Warden of Nothing strike in the Prison of Elders, because it was just so different than any of the other strikes Bungie has ever done. Like, you have to get into the Prison of Elders, and it's like the the Varix Servitor has gone crazy. Oh, I was so excited when I saw that. There's like that whole bit where you're having to like dodge all the trams that are running through the prison, and then you like go up this little lift, and suddenly you're in the arena for the Prison of Elders, and you're like, what? This is that thing from the first game. And it was just so cool. And then you get to the end, and the boss fight was neat because it's not only that, but he's like bringing in other bosses because he's got the whole prison running the Challenge of Elders protocol. So that's really cool. Um, so what did I say? Bows, Warden of Nothing, um, and <laughs> uh, Thundercrash. 
<laughs> the, I remember when I saw that in one of the early Vidocs when they were really starting to promote Forsaken in earnest. And I saw this Titan supermaning through the air and smashing down into the ground. And I said, well, that's going to be the only super I use for the rest of eternity. The melee ability is like you have to sprint and then jump and then you do like a ground pound into the ground. I don't think anybody thought about that if you also use insurmountable skull fort. Oh, God. So if you are in a large enough group of people, you can basically be sprinting and jumping and smashing back to the ground in perpetuity. (laughs) That's fantastic. It's amazing. I couldn't care less about either of the other new Titan supers. The hammer is fine. The giant shield is fine. But the fact that I can be the equivalent of when the Warsat crashes for the public event, uh, that's, you know, <laughs> I live for that. Oh, it's so good. So that is Destiny 2 Forsaken, as talked about for far too long by two nerds who know too much about the game. It's very true. It's like a brand new game. So even if you did play Destiny 2, you're going to love it. Fantastic. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So that's that. 